Coming up next to the stage is a man who I've welcomed into my home and regretted it. His name is Jack Chick. Jack Chick, I know, is covering one of the typical fan fiction topics. You know, the fan fiction is, is usually about, like, maybe it's about Sonic, or, you know, maybe it's about mm, the band Cradle of Filth. Jack Chick! Wow, this is a lot lower than I wanted. Oh well, fuck it. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is interminably long and I'm just gonna get started. Cassandra was driving carefully to see her beloved band, Cradle of Filth, in concert. She had the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack on because she was just in the mood right now for instrumental music, all gothed up, as she would call it. You know, the chains, black eye makeup, black lipstick, black cradle shirt, fishnets on her arms, clunky boots, bought at Hot Topic, and of course, big baggy pants. <laughs> she stopped in an intersection going to turn to the road that would lead her to the parking lot. It was getting dark, and suddenly a car speeding and swerving came head on, her on the driver's side. All Cassandra heard uh, was the squealing tires and the busting glass. Her world went black very quick. Sorry it's too short, guys, but this is my first fic. I will put a new one on, so please review it next week. <laughs> and now to steal a phrase from somebody much better at this than me. Scene change! <laughs> she looked up. Sure enough, it was the actor that played Norrington. Commodore Norrington? Cassandra played along. Yes, and who in the blazes are you? My name is Cassandra Lejon. I was in a car wreck. I'm badly hurt. Please, I need to see the on-set doctor or the director. I'm sorry if I'm intruding on the set. Woman, you are speaking in tongues. There is no such thing as a car. I haven't the slightest idea about this director you are talking about. Now I'm a little busy dealing with the attack on Port Royal, so please tell me the truth or they're going to find yourself in a hard predicament, Norrington. Sorry, this quote continues. <laughs> Norrington cut her off, what a dick, on ellipsis. Cassandra was fumed that her cut her off and frightened that this wasn't a dream or the set. I am telling the bloody truth, she said, pleading with me into frustration. As she, as she was saying this, Norrington was eyeing her. Her clothing, her makeup, her face was even whiter than the whores around here and all the ghastly chains and spikes and other metals hanging off her. She was not of this world. Only he could think of was that she was a witch, maybe, and that was freighting him and the others. He decided her fate the, pir fate the pirates and witches alike share. <laughs> a short drop and a sudden stop, he sneered. Gillette? He called on for his men. Yes, sir. She seemed to come out of nowhere. Clap her in irons and take her to the jail. She will be a date, if you say, for Mr. Sparrow at the gallows tomorrow. Ellipsis. Cassandra's eyes widened. Sparrow? You mean Captain Jack Sparrow? Johnny Depp Sparrow? Cassandra was said surprised at the name and then winced as the irons were put on her. <laughs> Scene change. <laughs> Cass couldn't help but to laugh. I'm as real as you are, Captain Ellipsis. Jack eyed her again. He was intrigued by her, her clothes, her makeup. Where are you from, Missy? <laughs> if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Besides, if you did, it's a long story. Uh, then some shit happens. Cass then heard the other pirates telling Jack the stories of the pearl, but she was rummaging through her many pockets. Ah, she found what it was she was looking for. Her knife with Egyptian hieroglyphics carved on it. She flipped it. <laughs> she flipped it open. Lucky the redcoat didn't check her for stuff since they were so nervous. So at this point, I should state, by the way, that I did miss uh, the end of chapter two in which there's a preview for all the hot, vampy sex that is coming. You don't get any of that. <laughs> hey, Jack, are you all right? Jack turned around and jumped a little when he saw Cassandra right at his door. I'm fine. 
Now that he got a closer look at the girl, he took in her features, long raven hair with crimson streaks in it, green eyes, a ring in the left side of her nose, and in the middle of her lip, ellipsis. Interesting, he thought. <laughs> oh, come on, she hasn't even shape-shifted yet. Look, I'm going to try to get you out of here. Cass, she knew she shouldn't and let things take the course with Jack, Will, and Elizabeth, but she had to try. She couldn't just leave him. She said without even looking up from her task. Jack smirked at her boldness. He couldn't help but to be curious about this woman that now befriended him. That kind of kindness was hard to come by in this era. Scene change. Uh, no, the part's not. <laughs> Author's note. Holds up a signed restraining order from Johnny Depp. Hey, at least I got his autograph. No, I... No, I still don't own Pirates of the Caribbean. Ellipsis, damn ellipsis. Okay, this is the fic where the title comes into play. Now, my vampires here have two sets of fangs, the ones before the canines and the canines themselves. The canines lengthen on will. They can fly around and scale up buildings and etc. They hate crosses, and a stake through the heart will kill anybody, you moron. Hee 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 hee, just kidding. They can also change into any animal they want, but it's always black. Werewolves, eh, full moon, silver, most of the myths, whatever. Ta! A hand rested gently on his shoulder. No, Che, don't. She's a different. I read her mind. <laughs> Cassandra raised an eyebrow, still pointing at the cutlass, the vampire named Noche, looking at the werewolf eyeing Verakai again, where the other one was she had no idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I'm skipping around, but trust me, it doesn't make any sense anyway. <laughs> exactly, Sombra said, a bit wide-eyed at the extent of Cassandra's knowledge. Of course Cass knew a lot about vampires and liked them. What stereotypical goth didn't? <laughs> she then studied Sombra, and she held herself regally and wore a simple red crest velvet v-neck dress with bellowing sleeves. <laughs> And she hid half of her face with her waist-length brown wavy hair, etc. Et so we're gonna we're gonna skip ahead to one of the longer passages here. So uh, if you can't see it, this uh, this entire thing is one paragraph. <laughs> Man, I'm really organized here. <laughs> Noche. <laughs> okay, so 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 Cass and Noche are going to try and save Cassandra's life now. Noche then laughed at the surprised look on poor Cass's face. Ha, oh, don't worry, love. I'm not going to. Why is that? Cass asked. I did want you though, because you knew so much about us. But Sombra told me when she found when she read your mind and well I dashed. He ran, his, <laughs> he ran his fingers through his long hair and shyly looked down. You thought I would be better company alive? Cassandra asked in a chuckle as she was sure she saw the vampire blush. If vampires did blush, ellipsis, quotation mark. <laughs> well, yes, pretty much, comma, quotation mark. <laughs> he, he looked up, mischief twinkling in his eyes. Well, here we are, Noche stopped it, reached out his arm to gesture where they were at a cliff overlooking the sea. Cassandra's jaw dropped. It was beautiful, ellipsis. I knew you would like it. He came up to Cassandra's back and let her lean into him. Cassandra knew he wouldn't hurt her. Noche suddenly felt Cass go rigid and start shaking uncontrollably. Cass, what's wrong? He turned to face him, and her eyes were rolled back. All of a sudden, blood was coming from her nose. Noche mind, Noche mind called Sombra for help. He laid, <laughs> he laid her down gently, but she started thrashing about. Noche put his full weight on her so he could contain her shaking. He saw some foam coming out from the corner of her mouth. Sombra came in, pushed Cass down, and put a piece of cloth in Cass's mouth and let her... 
continue. All, all the ignoring Noche. She's having a seizure. Noche, help me put wait on her until she comes. Noche did, and they waited for what seemed like forever. She stopped Cass, looked up, not Sombra and Noche, and saw their worried faces. Cass? <laughs> what in the underworld was that? So then some hot vampy sex happens, and we're just going to skip over that. It's a G-rated podcast, did you know? It was only a couple of minutes, and Sombra was back. She helped with the shirt and pants. The shirt was comfy silk and black with, <laughs> with kind of puffy sleeves, but not like the one Jerry wore on Seinfeld. No, 2005. Seinfeld had been off the air for a decade. Noche leaned in and kissed her softly on the cheek, staying there for a moment, fighting the natural vampiric urge he felt. He could hear her heartbeat. It wasn't real steady. Hear her pulse unsteady also. Her breath was ragged, as it has been for a while, the poor girl. It's very fine. I don't mind. I have no idea who said that. No chain, no cha may I do oh, no. Yeah, so then she feels and discovers that he doesn't have a heartbeat, and then she fucks him again. As Cassandra ate, Jack came into her mind again. Great, she was in the triangle within herself, no cha Jack, and herself. That's a force of. <laughs> sort of? <laughs> So, anyways, some more bullshit happens, and, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna skip ahead to after uh, Cassandra has been embraced. <laughs> uh, by the way, I should say that she uh, refers to Noche and uh, Sombra after she's embraced as her brother and sister. <laughs> That's why we're not reading the sex, folks. <laughs> First lesson, you have the ability to fly. Use it to your advantage. They went to the window and opened it. Okay, but how do I do that? <laughs> Contrary to what many believe, vampires do have a humorous and mischief side, and it was an opportune moment for something like that, and the siblings <laughs> like, to, <laughs> like to have their fun sometimes, and since Cassandra wasn't a frail, suffering human anymore, they looked at each other, smiled, showing their two sets of fangs, and pushed four cats out the window. A string of profanities were heard until they stopped and Noche and Sombra laughed hysterically for they knew what happened. Her vampiric instincts and senses kicked in and rather pissed off Cassandra came rising in front of them, her red eyes glowing and she knew it. That was not funny! Noche was the first to calm himself. My dear, it was only the way you would learn it. It is much harder to describe how to fly Sombra and I had to figure it out for ourselves. We did this to other vampires we made. <laughs> Cassandra raised a surprised eyebrow. You made others before me? Yes, of course, sister. We, like we have told you, we have been around for a very long time. Where are they now? That question seemed to have rubbed Sombra the wrong way. She looked away. It's not important right now. Let's go to the woods. Hey, wait a darn minute. I think I have a right to know more about this stuff because I will be staying with you guys for a while and I have this connection or bond with you forever. I think I deserve to know a few things here. Cassandra then wished she had th thought before she had asked. Well, she was always prone to do that. I guess that will never change. For Sombra's eyes were red with anger. She whacked Cassandra up against a wall. Cass, getting defensive, stood right up to Sombra, her vampiric defenses kicking in. You want to know what happened to you? Some are okay in other lands. One girl I rescued from an abusive home took... 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 Yeah. Turned her, took her in as a sister like you when she was caught by men of the church one day, minding her own business, stabbed many times so she couldn't fend herself, probably tortured and raped by men of God. She married bad the word. She was then tied to a pole and bled almost dry in the Times Square and then burned alive. And when the sun rose, another girl was... <laughs> Can you believe that it only took two readings for somebody to just throw down their script and yell, fuck it? What happened to Chris and Phil? Don't worry, this shirt gets washed. 